Hi, well, I'm Mary Bowsted. I'm Joint General Secretary of the National Education Union. I think that um, the arts are a primary act of mind. We know that, you know, those ancient rock paintings being discovered uh, much older than previously thought and storytelling, that's a primary act of mind. We tell our life in stories. When we're talking about our day, we tell a story. When we're remembering things, we tell a story. And so stories are a way of making sense of the world. Art is a way of making sense of the world as is dance. And it's about expressing feelings and emotions, but also reacting to the world. And, and as such, it's what defines our humanity. The, our creativity defines us as human. We are the only animals which are creative in this way. That's why if education is to engage and develop the potential of the human being, that's why it has to engage fundamentally and centrally with, with, with creativity and with the arts in all their forms. If we don't do that, then we're not focusing on what is educating children and young people uh, in, their, in the essence of what is human. If there isn't an arts education in school, a creativity and, and a creative education, then they miss out on the ability to develop all sorts of skills, developing their imagination, developing um, ways to express how they're feeling, the ability to move well and speak well, translate what they are feeling and what they're experiencing into something really creative, uh, whether through art or through music or through drama. If we want to broaden balance curriculum, something which will inspire and engage children and young people, then absolutely the arts and creativity scene need to be at the centre of that. For myself, um, when I was at school, I actually didn't enjoy school much. Uh, I, you know, I always find people who enjoyed school to be rather odd. And uh, I didn't enjoy school like lots of people who then became teachers. One of my motivations for becoming a teacher was not to do to my pupils what was done to me. For me, drama and music were the things which kept me at school. I was in the choir, and that was hugely important. And I was in every play. My triumph was playing um, Oberon in the Midsummer Night's Dream at a girls' school. You know, that was just triumph. And I loved everything about the plays. I loved the rehearsals. I loved the friendships you made when you were rehearsing. I loved the thrill of the performance. But for me, that was another world. And the magic of that other world was so important. And I know that gave me more confidence. It gave me the confidence to speak in public. It was such an important part of my school life. If It was the only bit of my school life that I really enjoyed, apart from the English lessons. I think bringing art and creativity into every topic is really important, but unfortunately, I don't think it happens too much now. I think the pressure of the accountability framework means that um, children spend a lot of their time in school sitting down listening and then writing. And I think that things are really being missed, particularly oracy and the use of talk to learn and and also creativity and and it's becoming more and more difficult to make those cross curricular links to um, insert creativity into other subjects. I think that's becoming really hard. Uh, I think that's also part to do with the separation of subjects in a re very rigid way. Lots of schools now are looking at the curriculum and the arts and creativity are really in danger. Drama, arts, music, um, because of the EBAC and because you know, you've just got one creative subject in the back. I, you know, we've seen already a decline in the number of children taking uh, creative subjects at GCSE and funding cuts provide even bigger threats to that. I think if teachers are creative themselves, it gives them far greater confidence to introduce creativity with their pupils and into their curricula and into their work, um, because it gives you something concrete to draw on. And actually, if you've experienced yourself the, the the immense pleasure of creativity, then that gives you um, confidence as well to think, well, this is important, this is necessary, and I know this for myself and I want it for my pupils. I think it would be fantastic for more educators, more teachers to be able to do live creative lives. But I also think it would be fantastic for teachers to spend more time with their family and to have some leisure time and with working hours approaching 50 hours a week. That's really hard. I think the problem for us as a society is we exhaust our teachers. Indeed, I'm writing a book about it. So 
it's on my mind a lot at the moment. But if we could free up teachers' time and they could engage in creative activities, which we would be so good for their own physical well-being, their mental well-being, their mental health, uh, it would help them. It would be something that would enrich their lives and give something back to them. Because at the moment, teachers are just uh, their energy is just sapped through intense pressure and excessive work. Listen, I know you're exhausted if you're a teacher. I know that you've got far too much work to do, but this is a fantastic resource. And it, you know, you can dip into it. You can spend three minutes on the website getting fantastic ideas about creative writing, about art, about music, about drama, it's, and how to use creativity. And the other thing is it's ideas from around the world. So if you're concerned about decolonizing your curriculum, if you're concerned about introducing um, themes and issues from around the world which reflect the uh, cultural heritage of the pupils that you teach or widen your pupils cultural heritage then use this resource it's really fantastic